this is my topic. Short intro on myself. Uh, uh, I think most of you know me already, even presenting two weeks ago. So, uh, Markus Möller, Microsoft 365 developer expert from Avanade in Germany. Contact me on Twitter or uh, over my blog uh, if you like. And uh, today, no big introduction. Let's directly jump into the demo. Um, the Teams messaging extension, hosting an adaptive card and update it. So, First, uh, I want to show you uh, the quick introduction from my last demo again, um, where I was uh, picking a document and posting it as an adaptive card. And what you can see when you do it, this is the normal way, is that you only post this adaptive card to the compose box. You can still write something. You can also remove it again if you like. And you have to finally send it to the message channel which then, in the end, it turns out that you, as a person, sent this message. If you want to update those cards, you need to do it different. And this is what I want to show you today. And therefore, I have a different messaging extension here. And this is uh, based on the very uh, basic demo scenario you get implemented once you establish an action-based uh, messaging extension with the Yeoman Teams generator, which will first ask you for email. And once you submit this, um, you would normally uh, come back with an adaptive card in your compose box, as you have just seen. But I changed it. And so today, we are coming into this message preview window, where we can either edit uh, it, which does in fact mean that we will jump back to uh, our email address entry, or we can say we, can, we are fine with this card and we can send it. And if we do that, then there we are. Then we see that now we have no compose box anymore and we directly have a send message um, based on our bot channel account. Yeah. And this enables us to, for instance, click on a button. And this button will finally change the card under the hood. And here we can now do this again and again and again and again. So this is the very basic and simple scenario, um, just uh, edited uh, in a way that we can update it. So how does this look like in code? Or let's first have a look at how the process is running. Yeah. So when we start, when we kick off uh, our when we kick off our messaging extension from the start, we first get a random picture here. And this random picture, um, or together with the email, will be posted to our preview. Yeah? And the preview, we can either accept it or not. If we do not this, we will get back here. If we accept it, we will post an adaptive card. And this adaptive card will finally occur here in our front end message channel. And then we can update this. This will be, uh, sorry, we can update it. And this will then run back into our bot channel where uh, we will go back and post an updated card again. Yeah. Um, as an alternative, um, when you have a workflow, so I will show you a sample at the very end uh, in, in some cards. You can also, of course, uh, terminate this endless process. In my case, you can vote uh, as long as you like, but normally you might have some workflows where you might review uh, something. And once this is reviewed, you can also uh, come to an end finally. Yeah? And then uh, you will maybe only, you will not have a, a button anymore in this, uh, in this uh, card, and then you cannot update it anymore. Okay, how does this look like in code? The first two functions, what we have here in our uh, messaging extension middleware class, that one. The first thing is quite simple. The first thing, the function on fetch task, I did not really change it. Um, this is simply responsible for the initial task module where I had to enter my email address and there it is uh, returned. And this is uh, the this is the page that is uh, rendered when we click on this little icon here. 
Once we submit this first task value, entering an email address and clicking OK, then Gate comes uh, to a different shader. Uh, normally, we would still create an adaptive card, but then we now return it as a bot message preview type and with an activity preview, which uh, gets or which in, which is included our card here. And this is a difference. This comes to the window um, that you have to either edit or uh, to send uh, the card in the preview. Um, as I have to update the card, I can clearly recommend uh, to uh, create a service for that. I did this here because on the one hand, I have a card. This is uh, above here. I uh, shortened it a bit uh, because I think you can imagine the uh, card was quite simple. And then I'm doing uh, having a function called get the initial card. Yeah, this is a very basic card with a vote of null, uh, the email address, and so on. And here you can also see the URL uh, with the random picture um, you know from the demo scenario, maybe which is implemented in your teams uh, in the your teams generator solution already. So that you might change uh, the picture might change in different examples at different right times. The next thing is what's important is when we uh, either create uh, when you either click on the send or on the edit button, we have two functions here that uh, will do uh, the result or with that will handle that. The first is the send button where we simply um, get uh, the, the variables. Uh, here we get our variables um, from the attachment content. We then create a card. It's uh, the initial null value. And then we send this as an activity back. And this will now finally directly post the card to the message channel and not coming to a compose box or something like that. In the opposite, if someone clicks on edit, we will simply return the same input form again, like uh, we already did on the past screen uh, from the initial one. And then uh, in that case, we might already get grab, in my case, in my example, another photo, for instance, if we are not uh, satisfied with that one. Final thing to show, well, uh, uh, the very uh, the post final thing to show is what happens when you click on the vote button. The first difference is that we have to change the class now because this event is not handled in our middleware class, which we had before. Now we have to switch to our bot teams activity handler class. And there we have to implement the handle teams task module fetch. And this will again receive all our values from the existing message and from the existing card so that we keep our email, that we also keep the photo URL well, we also have to grab the existing number of votes. Then we will increment the votes. We will construct a new card with the new or existing values, depending on. So email URL doesn't change. New votes did, of course. And then we also have to identify the existing message. And this we can do from the reply to ID variable. And then we can finally update the message with context update activity. Only for uh, completeness reasons, um, increment votes is quite the same than the initial card. The only thing is that we now um, use a new number. Yeah? And this is what we will write uh, here into our card. And uh, this is what I was uh, using several times. And this is still in my adaptive card service I created for that. This is better than to uh, recreate the cards in, in, in directly in code. Yeah? But that's all from the code base. Last not least, yeah, the URLs. Uh, it's my blog post on that sample and also the sample in the PMP Teams um, gallery sample template. And last not least, as this is a very brief sample, we can also give you uh, another example where you can see how you could use this in different uh, Things, yeah, for instance, if you assume you have a document and review that, once this is reviewed, you can have a different button and you can also put in uh, some additional um, values who reviewed that by when, and then 
when the approval workflow is finally done, you can also remove all the kind of buttons, only have a view and have the data. This is another sample um, where you could use this technology for. But that's from my side. Awesome. Thank you, Marcus. Very, very cool stuff. Really appreciate you taking some time to share that with the community today. Thank you.